as he played, but he did. He did indeed. He has, I think, the sixth highest run number of runs for an England batsman and something like the third most impressive international average. I'll stop there because we're not the radio station where, down the road where they're worried about David Beckham's left foot, but he is an extraordinary exponent of cricket and one of, in his time, one of the biggest names in the world. He, yesterday, didn't seem, speaking to the BBC, that worried about the controversy. I have to live with it, and I do, because I'm clear in my mind, and I think most people in England are, that it's not true. Although the chief executive of Women's Aid has said celebrating a man... I don't care to toss about her, love. It's 25 years ago, so you can take your political nature and do whatever you want with it. You want to talk to me about my knighthood, it's very nice of you to have me, but I couldn't give a toss. Here's Labour's Harriet Harman speaking with Channel 4 News. This is a, an honour that's been bestowed by Theresa May um, and she has campaigned against the horror of domestic violence. She's even brought a bill forward to tackle domestic violence. So to give an honour to somebody who is convicted of blacking the eyes and bruising the face of their girlfriend, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very surprised and baffled how this could have happened. Mind you, the current Prime Minister is not for turning. Boris Johnson. That's a matter for the former Prime Minister, entirely up to her. It is at the discretion of the former Prime Minister and definitely a matter for her. All right, let's speak to some campaigners involved in this. Six minutes after seven, Mandu Reid is leader of the UK Women's Equality Party. Your reaction to yesterday's news. Good morning to you. Good morning, Mick. Um, I have to say that what happened yesterday is consistent with a pattern we we see um, across the political establishment where violence against women isn't taken seriously enough. And um, to be perfectly frank, it's got to the point where, and this, this is just the pinnacle of it, you could argue, where um, we have to take a stand. We've got to stand up for women and show that we are not going to celebrate and put men on a pedestal who are violent towards their partners, violent towards um, their girlfriends, violent towards anyone in society. Violence is not inevitable. And no, none of us want to live in a world where we just let that kind of behaviour um, carry on unchecked. And that's well, why we... Excuse me, the, excuse me. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't unchecked. He was fined and convicted. But this is the point. He's fined and convicted. Um, he appealed the case. The appeal was not upheld. And yet we're putting him on a pedestal and celebrating his achievements as if none of that stuff matters. You said There's at the got start... To be a threshold. You, you, There's got to be a threshold the, of what's acceptable. Mm. He overstepped the mark, and we have to make sure that people like that are not held up as heroes in okay. our society. M what M kind of message Ms. Reed, does that okay. send we, You said this is consistent across the political pattern. Point, point to some other examples, please. Well, I mean, that's precisely why um, we in the Women's Equality Party in the forthcoming general election are standing. No, 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 no. Just, gi gi no, no, just no, give no, me some more examples, I'm please. I'm, I'm about to explain. Oh, good. Um, I'm about to explain. Don't yeah. worry. That wasn't a, an off-piece comment. Okay. We are standing five survivors of um, violent sexual abuse and harassment against five MPs who have unresolved cases of those particular um, patterns of behaviour because... So these the are people who've not been... Excuse me, these are people who've not been convicted. These are people who... Um, who are, had by British law, then, are still innocent. Um, let me finish, Nick, please. Well, everybody wants we only to have a brief a amount of time. Exactly, exactly. So, so what we've got is five um, MPs who have um, had accusations made against right. them. Right. I'll try again. So they are, according to British law, they are innocent until proven those guilty. Those accusations have not been properly investigated. Oh. That is the problem. I so we see. Have now, that's a yellow card. You know you can't talk about people like that. I will try to bring you back into the conversation, but I'm not particularly minded if you're going to name people who are unable to defend themselves. And while you and your campaigners have very valid points, I would suggest that deliberately trying to do that rather denigrates your position. I'll try and get you back in. I don't know. Nearly ten after seven. Joanna Williams is Associate Editor of Spite. Do you share the concern that's being expressed? Good morning. Hello. No, I don't share this concern. I think people are very, very badly missing the point about this. The fact is we've had a failed Prime Minister in Theresa May, possibly a woman who will go down in history as one of the worst Prime Ministers we've ever had, 
who's been able to choose her friends and cronies to, to honour people, including Nick Timothy, who um, really have, have very, gave her very, very... Uh, led the country into a very dangerous and, and bad path. Uh, I think all of these honours should be abolished. It's an outdated system. That, like I say, it's about rewarding friends and cronies that failed. So, so you're not specifically that worried about boycott. You're more worried about the whole principle of the awards. I think that's the point, yeah. The whole of the honours system is outdated and is long overdue being abolished. But the fact that we do have this system, um, if we were to give out um, honours on the basis of someone's morality or even on the basis of people's personal behaviour, no one, frankly, would have an honour. Nobody stands up to this level of scrutiny. Well, let's put that, let's try and put that to Mandu Reid. Is that fair to say that no one, if you delved deep enough into everyone's background, it would be impossible to award anyone an honour? I mean, it depends what the standard of acceptable behaviour is. And I think we've got to draw a line um, under, you know, certain types of conduct. So violence against women, sexual violence, murder, child abuse, all these things have to be put in a category that actually renders the, the, the people who have committed those offences as um, ineligible to be uh, put on pedestals. We, we can't allow that to be the case when you have a quarter so, um, of women in this country who have experienced domestic violence and two women a week who are killed okay. by their partner or former partner. So, so, um, not acceptable. There's no such thing as redemption then? I think you... I think redemption doesn't need to involve putting someone on a pedestal and giving them one of the highest honours in this country. But he's being, Absolutely he's, not. He, he's being, of course, remembered for his cricket, just lastly. You know, what's, what's like odd to me about that is people say, oh, this was 25 years ago that this incident happened. You could argue that it was um, even longer ago that his cricket triumphs occurred. Yes, and so but, for me, the, the, idea, the idea that somebody who has committed that sort of offence is somebody who we are prepared to uphold as a hero, tells you everything we need to know about what's wrong with how the political establishment um, chooses to celebrate people um, for their achievements in this country. Right, OK. Mandu Reid, thank you. You're leader of the UK Women's Equality Party. Joanna Williams, your associate editor of Spiked. And now over to you. I need to give you some of the background. As we know, you've already told you that this happened some years ago. It was in October 1996 at the £1,000-a-night Hotel du Cap in Antibes in the French Riviera. There was an altercation between Jeff Boycott, as, Jeff Boycott as he was then, uh, and his girlfriend Margaret Moore, the circumstances of which do go back some time. They'd been in a relationship for about four years. They'd met in a, another rather luxurious hotel, the Sandy Lane Hotel in Barbados in 1992, and then both parties agreed they have a rather on-off relationship and boycott subsequently said that he thought that she his girl then girlfriend was happy with that on one particular occasion as often happens in domestic situations it flared up he went she went back to their hotel room to discover that he was packing his, her bags uh, packing his bags i'm sorry to depart and that's where the altercation happened now of course it's been and indeed the french courts were satisfied when it finally got to court some i think it was two years after yes it was two years after when it went to grass to be heard it was heard in boycott's absence Ms. Moore was able to produce pictures of how she'd been beaten around the face. She claimed, he's always denied, she was punched up to 20 times and he restrained her on the bed. He, his side has always argued that in fact they did have a tussle but she, he tried to prevent her getting onto the hotel balcony because he was fearful for her safety and they both fell and crashed together onto marble floor. He, boycott, then pointed to injuries on his elbow which he and his team said substantiated his case. There you have it. Not much to add to this one, but what I will say is I'm fairly sure he did do this because when you listen to Test Match Special, he comes across as quite a cantankerous individual who would likely hit you if you even slightly annoyed him. But uh, in terms of the knighthood, I don't really care. They gave one to Jimmy Savile and we know what he was doing, so there's no standards here. It's kind of irrelevant. But anyway, please let me know your thoughts. Does this wife beater deserve a knighthood? Like, dislike, subscribe, unsubscribe. Please comment. Ilu Sassoon. Peace out.